Welcome back to Ideal Bike Channel. Why this video? Why is necessary to crash such nice and popular bikes? Who makes this crash test and how they make it? What are the final results? We'll try to answer to all these questions until the end of the video, so stay tuned. So first of all, these crash tests are specifically developed by a company called SESVMAP for the study of motorcycles. I will put a link in the description with the company's details. The main objective is to reproduce the effects caused by a front knock and the bike's subsequent sliding along the road surface. As you can see in these images, this consists of the impact of a mobile barrier to the forward part of a motorcycle, in our case the Honda NC750X and the Africa Twin, placed in the same direction of movement as the mobile barrier, entitled 10 degrees from its longitudinal plane of symmetry. Further research and crash tests have been conducted focused on motorcycle impacts against steel guardrails and concrete barriers. So basically these crash tests are done for motorcycle safety research, for developing the safety of the road barriers, which is very important in my opinion. Projects like this have been done to analyze the protection benefits of safety parts fitted to the motorcycle. They are also done to develop uh, motorcycle road restraint systems, which can reduce the impact severity of motorcyclist collisions. To date, much of the motorcycle barrier crash testing that has been done has been performed in Europe and Australia. And compared to the United States, other parts of the world have been more progressive in terms of development of barrier safety features to accommodate motorcyclists. The roadside barriers are one of the most important keys to motorcycle safety and research, including here the crash tests, are finally identifying how they will affect the rider's safety. Riders are better off hitting a roadside barrier in a crash than having no barrier and hitting a tree. Barriers have been proven to reduce casualties in all motorists by up to 80%. Now let's get back to our crash test. Let's take a look at the Honda NC750X. As we can see, the fork is fully compressed after hitting the barrier. Some parts of the front wheel fender are falling. The frame seems to be very stable. The bike is quite solid from what we can see. The rim uh, is also affected by this impact. Then the bike crashed on the right side and the first impact is with the handlebar and the foot peg. Now the bike is sliding and from another angle we can see that uh, the handlebar is quite affected on the crash. Also the exhaust, the signals and the fender, the radiator and the braking pedal were also affected. Nevertheless the bike seems very solid after this impact. Let's check out also how the Africa Twin handled this crash test. The same fully compressed fork after the first impact and also I can see some movement on the radiator side. The Africa Twin is equipped with a crash bar and a skid plate. The front suspension with 252mm stroke and 224mm axle travel seems to be fully compressed after this crash. And as you can notice, there is a higher rebound from the suspension. This rebound pushes the bike higher, but still uh, the same, the same thing when it comes to crashing on the right side. First the foot peg, the braking pedal and the handlebar. But still the bike looks very solid. What we can notice is that the handlebar, it's more more resistant to the impact. The rim and the front discs are still affected by this uh, collision. Nevertheless, the bike seems very solid after this crash. It's a heavy bike, but still, still very compact and uh, seems to handle quite well this crash test. I really hope that this video answered some of your questions. Please let me know if I've missed something. 
I am very interested to find out your opinion about these tests. Please let me know your inputs in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye-bye.